So we've talked about um, the surveying workflows, we talked about AC workflows, and we're talking about tank. Um, and this is now where we're going to go into some of the other live demonstrations. So this example now, I'm just going to I'm just going to ping through all of these because you can read this at your leisure. But essentially, we are going to now look at a very very simple tunnel um, uh, tunnel uh, inspection uh, reporting method, whereby we're going to extract the neutral axis um, and we're going to compare. Uh, we're going to extrude a theoretical. Uh, design model along um, our neutral axis and then do a comparison report with the ability to extract that information directly across into AutoCAD. So let's just um, let's just jump over into our tunnel inspection module. Here you go. Okay, so we're now in um, Cyclone 3DR again and what you can see here we've got some scan data which which has been meshed and we've got um, an example cross-section as well. So this is a theoretical cross-section that's been created. So imagine that's our design. But the first thing we want to do is extract a, um, a, a neutral axis from this uh, from this tunnel. So I'm just going to go into uh, extract and I'm going to say extract neutral axis. And you can see you can choose with you know circular or more square you can put an approximate diameter if you want to you can also smooth this once we've created it we can put some smoothing on it so i'm going to say preview and you should see very very quickly we extract the the neutral axis and if i zoom in so if i actually get into the the um, center of the mesh what i can do now is if i move this up and down you can see we can make that more or less smooth. I'm going to I'm going to just leave it roughly at this upper end here to give us a nice smooth um, axis. Okay, and then I'm going to say okay. So that's now if we just rotate that round, you can see we've got our neutral axis sat inside of our tunnel. Uh, what I need to do now with this um, with this uh, effectively this uh, cross section profile is extruded. So I'm going to just turn off the mesh group for the tunnel, and I'm going to select. I'm going to select these two objects and we're going to do an extrusion along that path. So I'm just going to select those two and I'm just going to say extract, uh, or is it, where are we? Uh, surface modeling extrusion. And we're going to do profile along a path. And we now are going to choose, there's some options here that we can choose. So we can uh, close extremities, we can have unchecked for this, but make perpendicular to the path is very, very important. Obviously, if we've got um, if we've got uh, a steep incline, for example, we need to make sure that this is being produced correctly. And we also want to turn with the curve. So we've got uh, we've got a nice, accurate finish and fit. Um, everything else I'm going to leave is now I'm going to hit preview. And there you go. That is our now that is now our design model. And that's our, th our theoretical design model, which we're going to compare against the meshed point cloud. Um, so I'm just going to press OK. So what I need to do now in terms of the inspection um, is actually select the uh, mesh. So I'm going to select the mesh. I'm going to select the extrusion and the neutral axis. And I'm going to go into the analysis tab and I'm going to say create profiles along this axis. So what this will do, we're going to do it in 2D. We're going to do locally perpendicular. You can reverse the axis if you want to. So the minute you can see the analysis being carried out with the direction of the arrow, I can reverse that accordingly. Um, I can remove points if they're outside of a th certain threshold. But I'm just going to do um, regular step of, say, I don't know, 10 meters along this tunnel. You can then say all over, or you can specify. So you can specify by distance if you want to, or you can actually specify by picking on the tunnel. So if you wanted to do cross sections from here to here, you could use that click points function. So I'm just going to say all over. And I'm going to say preview, and there you go. That's our analysis. So it, it hasn't actually performed the analysis yet. All it's done is just given us our cross sections along that line. So the next step, so if look if you look in here, you can see the design model versus the, the mesh data. And then I can say compare inspect, and this is where it allows us now to actually um, change the. You can change these colors accordingly. So you've got the overbreak and the underbreak listed there. I'm going to say preview. And you can see now if we zoom into one of these sections, you can see how that is being reported accordingly. But if I want to edit the colors at any time for that inspection report, I can say edit and I can go in here and I can change these colors. One, one feature I really like is the magnify tool. So if I hit the magnify tool, you can now see the areas of the deviation are reported uh, in an exaggerated fashion, which just makes it a little bit easier to see. And I also like this function, which is highlight extreme values. So if you highlight extreme values, it will put a little box around the uh, the value which is the highest deviation so there are all of our um all of our inspections and again like i said before we could change these colors according so you've got tolerance you've got thresholds or you've got the initial 
Um, and once we're happy, we just press OK. And then if we say 2D preview export, that will allow us to push this data out into other places. So you can push it out to a DXF or you can send to AutoCAD. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly create a new drawing in AutoCAD. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to close the other one that we were, I'm just going to say that we don't want to save that. And I'm going to now send to AutoCAD. And if we open up CAD now, there's all that information directly sent across into CAD. So you've seen that live, all of that information and that reporting is there ready for you to start doing analysis in a CAD package and you could plot this out accordingly. So for me, the, obviously the reporting function is huge. The deviation reporting is a fantastic um, solution, but the ability to then push this out on the back end to either a DXF or straight to CAD is hugely powerful, especially you know, for the civil engineers and the project engineers and surveyors out there. So that is the tunnel inspection. So uh, I'm gonna press okay. And there you go, you can see now we've got our 3D view with all those cross sections with the deviations. And we can also perform um, unrolling as well. So you can do 2D unrolling directly on that data set if you wanted to. So that is the tunnel inspection format. So now I'm just gonna jump back into the presentation. So we've done that live demo. Um, I wanted to show you this video because I think this is really important. Again, because we can support data from a whole range of different sensors, this is um, obviously photogrammetric data that's come through from a UAV, and this is our stockpile management tool. So you can, um, up on the left-hand side of the menu there, it just says stockpile, it's a separate workflow, and you just in invoke that action and then start working through the stockpile uh, tool. So what you do is basically put a contour around each pile that you can see, you specify the material type, you can specify um, uh, the density effectively. But what's really nice in terms of this workflow is obviously you can save all those contours. And then when you do a repeat survey, you can just bring this in and you can do a deviation report and a difference report between your two different data sets. Um, and at the end of this presentation, at the end of this video, you'll see that's running now. What's really, really nice is the, um, uh, the report that comes on the back end. So you can see we just go straight into the report, update that, and then open the report and you can see you've got the 3D view or the 2D view, depending on how you specified, but you've got your report directly at the back end and you can see every single pile, you've got the material name, the material type, the grain size, the perimeter, the area, and all that other information that would be useful. And then you can just send that report, you know, week after week, month after month, whoever it is that needs the information and it's all built directly into the solution. So that's, um, that's stockpile management. 